Welcome to the Soul Driven Podcast. I believe that when we invest in ourselves, the world benefits. If you are searching for meaning and purpose, if you are unsure about how to combine the spiritual with the everyday, if you are ready to uncover who you truly are, then you've come to the right place. The Soul Driven Podcast is dedicated to exploring the intersection of living a soulful and spiritual life in a driven and ambitious world. Join me for practical guidance, truthful discussions, and interviews with people who are successfully living a soul-driven life. My name is Anna Hendricks, spiritual guide, marketer, and your host. Thank you for being here. Welcome back, folks, to another soul-driven episode. What's up? Solo episode today, just you and I, but guess what? This, This is a big one. This is an important one. This is one that I'm probably going to do several more times in the future with different titles and hitting it from different angles because today's message is very, very important. And it's something that we need to really absorb, we need to take in, we need to sit with and evaluate, make decisions about, and because it has the ability to change how we view the world, how we experience the world, and how the world experiences itself, the future of this planet, the future of all things on this planet, it's a big one. And I got to tell you, like this is this is download. It's not just me. I'm not just the wisest being on the planet, not by any means. <laughs> but when this first came to me, today's topic first came to me back in 2020, it changed who I who I am. And it's something that I've been working with and sitting on and reevaluating and all of those things for the last couple of years. So this isn't just some hot topic thing that like bounced in my mind and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make a podcast about that. Not this one. This is a big one. So before we jump into that, two very fast announcements. First of all, if you are interested in learning more about the Akashic Records, how to empower them and utilize them in your own life, which I highly recommend, join my workshop on the 25th, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not able to join live, you will get the replay, the tools, the the meditations, everything that comes with it, Um, in addition to access to a private community where you can ask questions if you have them after the fact. But um, make sure to sign up pretty quick. Tickets are going fast and there is only a limited number of those available. Okay, and second one, if you are not aware yet, I am now doing live weekly forecast, like live weekly Akashic forecast. (laughs) So many words. Every Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. So come join me once I get through like channeling the, like we'll kind of do an overview from the week prior, the message prior, then I'll be channeling through the current message for the upcoming week. We'll talk a little bit about it. If you're alive, I will take questions, general questions that are for the Akashic Records since they'll already be open. And yeah, we can have a good old time. So I'm really excited about this new offering. It's just one more thing that I want to do to help assist you in these times. So take advantage, come join me, come hang out. It will evolve, I'm sure, with time, but yeah, I'm just excited about it. You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. Okay, so a couple of disclaimers on the front end, because again, we're going to be, we're going to be jumping into some I'm going to be very direct today and, you know, I think I'm often quite direct, but today I'm going to be extra direct because I want to make sure I'm very clear in my messaging. And so I have to share with you that some of the things that we're going to be talking about today might be triggering for you. And if they are triggering for you, what I would invite you and encourage you to do is to ask yourself why and to really sit with it. Listening to today's episode will require an open mind. So you don't have to worry about agreeing with everything I say. In fact, just come into this episode with no expectation and take in what resonates, leave what doesn't, but please, please, please take what is shared with you and, and think about it. 
you know, you might, you might completely agree with every single thing I say, who knows? Um, but you may not, you may disagree vehemently with everything I say. You may think differently of me. You may think, I don't even know what, but again, what I would invite you to do is if you find yourself getting triggered, getting upset, feeling like, you know, that heat rising in your body, that's something for you to sit with. That's something for you to spend time with, to try and get to the bottom of, because quite frankly, that's more about you than it is about me. And guess what? I've been in those moments. I'm in those moments often where I get triggered, (laughs) but there's always a lesson for us in any moment or action or anything like that. When we are triggered, always a lesson for us. And so that's a practice that I have started utilizing in my life is to really sit with myself Why am I being triggered right now? What is it that's going on? And I invite you to do the same. Because I'm going to ask you to be radical today. I'm going to ask you to think outside the box. This is about us growing, about us being different than we always have, about us taking that next step up as a civilization, as a collective, as a planet. We are being asked for more. And unfortunately, A, that doesn't come naturally to us, B, that's not what is being pushed, and C, with everything that's happening on the planet right now, it's pretty tough. So my, my final caveat is that there's no shame in this. Um, if you feel like I'm calling you out, I promise you I am not. Um, there's no shame, no guilt, none of that, okay? I am focused on solutions. I am focused on on helping you, helping me, helping us to grow, to be better, to be more. And that requires getting uncomfortable sometimes. And that requires us stretching the way that we've looked at things. And so, you know, it's going to be uncomfortable. But again, no shame, no guilt, because nobody is better than anyone else. We are all equally here. We all equally have purpose. We are all divine, beautiful, beautiful beings. And yes, man, we are, we are lost in our humanness, but guess what? That's, that's a beautiful thing too, because we don't have to stay there. We can grow. And that's what today's topic is about. So when I talk about not like being radical and not taking sides, I have to take a step back and give a little bit of context, right? So polarity. We all know it. We see it daily. We experience it oftentimes, get lost in it. That's okay. Earth is a polarized planet. And in in truth, we need polarity to understand our surroundings. There's a really beautiful book called Conversations with God. And when I first read that book, oh my gosh, it, it, it changed my life in so many different ways. But I remember In the beginning part of the book, one of the things that God talked about was that without polarity, we wouldn't be able to understand things, right? So without loneliness, we would never understand and appreciate companionship. Without grief, we wouldn't know peace. We wouldn't understand the importance of peace, right? Or you could even say war, right? We've got that crisis in Ukraine right now. Without that, we're all looking at that thinking like, no, 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 we want peace. We want peace. But were we really proclaiming that before things started happening in Ukraine? Without understanding boredom, we wouldn't want to have fun in our lives. So polarity plays a role. And, you know, I think it's pretty human to like make something out to be the bad guy, but there are no bad guys in, in this discussion. Okay. Again, we're here for solutions and polarity plays a role. It really does help us to appreciate both sides of the scale. I know that in my most recent interview with Adam Dintz, he talked about a lot of pain that he had to go through a lot of loss before he was actually able to awaken spiritually and to really step into that, that part of himself that knew himself right? And I think for the majority of us, we can, we can, we can tag that event onto us in some way, shape or form. We've all gone through something very difficult 
and come out the other side better, wiser, whatever the case may be. Life and life on this planet is really about learning how to balance these polarities, how to appreciate both the pretty and the ugly, to understand that it's just our judgment that names them. They simply are what they are. And the judgment doesn't serve us. The problem with polarity is that it has taken on such a huge role on this planet that it's taking our power away from us. We no longer have control over our thoughts and feelings and emotions. We just get angry. We just get, mm, you know, triggered, right? When things don't align with our values, with our morals. I heard a really interesting discussion with Matthias De Stefano, uh, who is someone that I have been watching, oh man, with, with focused interest for a couple of years now. He also is an Akashic Record reader. However, he was born into this life, like knowing his guides, and then he started remembering all of his past lifetimes when he was young. His story is so fascinating. He has a series on Gaia called The Initiation, Highly recommend. Um, the first season of that might be a bit too technical, so I, I might suggest jumping into the second one. But there's a, tons of interviews with him out there. And you might think, I don't know, you could think all kinds of things about him, but if you give him some space, I believe that his truth will resonate within you. But one of the things that he was talking about in this particular interview was about how morality is screwing everything up. You know, back in the day when we were all like, you know, like set aside in our own tribes, right? We had different levels of morality. And how to best see this is to, again, this was, this was his example. Um, he used this example of these two tribes. You know, one of the, one of the tribes were like meat eaters. They, they hunted, you know, um, the animals of the day. That's what they ate. That's how they uh, lived. That's what they did. The, the other tribe worshipped animals and held them as very sacred beings and, and they didn't eat meat. And when these two tribes ended up running into each other, well, of course it just caused a problem, right? Because for one tribe, eating meat was, was sacred. It was, it was, no, it was holy. You don't do that. For the other tribe, it was like, man, this is just, this is how we exist. But because those two tribes came together, it created war, it created pain, it created sadness. And that is what polarity is doing right now on our planet. And because, again, as Matea shared, it's like we are no longer sanctioned off into our little tribes and our little cultures. We are an international community because of the internet. We are all connected. Therefore, we've got all kinds of morality that's like overlapping left and right. And people are pointing fingers and saying, no, that's wrong. And no, that's wrong. And I don't agree with that. And blah, 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 blah. And hey, I'm, I'm right there with you. Again, this is a very human thing. And it's part of what we do here on this planet. It helps us to understand what's around us. And I got to tell you, <laughs> I've spent a large portion of my life being like the morality police. Um, I can't even tell you how many times I've been called like a prude. I've, I've been, um, which if you've listened to this podcast, you might think I'm a wild child, which I am. But I've always had this really, really deep sense of integrity and morality. And, you know, I always carried myself very differently as a woman than a lot of my female friends. And... You know, I, I, it wasn't that I like sat back and judged them. It was just that I thought this is not, this doesn't work for me. You know, this is not, this won't bring me what it is that I want. Um, and because we are an international community in this day and time, that polarity and those morality concepts are creating an enormous problem, Right. But the universe, this new earth, this new paradigm, if you will, is asking us to be more. It's asking us to be different and to come up higher. It's asking us to recognize both sides and then create a third. I call this the middle space. 
And when I came up with this concept back in 2020, which I'll share with you a couple of examples of how this came to fruition, but again, it, it changed the way that I view the world around me. I realized we don't have to make a choice. We can create something new. There is space for both sides. And when we come together, when we acknowledge something within ourselves, that truth within ourselves, then we can get creative and make something new. So where this really started off for me was, um, again, back in 2020, in the midst of, and, and you'll have to excuse me because my memory, especially when I'm all like gung-ho about something, my memory isn't always crystal clear. But this was in the midst of, you know, when the basketballers were kneeling in protest of the, um, the things that were happening with the police departments, um, racial profiling, these sorts of things. Um, as we all remember back in 2020, that was a very huge topic. And there was something that I saw on Facebook. It was this story, and there was this photo of these basketball players and a portion of the team were on their knees in the midst of the um, you know, Pledge of Allegiance. And then there were other players who were standing. And the players who were kneeling were obviously like, you know, protesting, racial profiling, um, these sorts of things. And the people, uh, the players who were, were standing were those who maybe had family in the military or family who worked for de police departments or, or something of that nature. But they were all holding hands in unity. And that just blew that just blew me away. It was like, oh, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Because what was going on for me at that point in time was I was really struggling. So as I mentioned to you before, yep, yeah, I was on the morality police, <laughs> police squad, uh, could have been a captain. Um, but, uh, you know, when, when, when we went into lockdown and people started wearing masks and, um, you know, one of the favorite things that I love to do with my partners, we love to go for walks. We live downtown, um, here in Wilmington, North Carolina. We like walking along the water and, you know, lockdown happened and all of a sudden we were like sequestered to our homes. And that was difficult for me because, you know, I've, I've been an entrepreneur for over a decade and I really enjoy getting out of the house, going to a coffee shop, co-working, whatever. And so, of course, we started taking like almost daily walks and it started causing all kinds of problems for me because people weren't wearing masks. And yes, it was outside. Yes, I can make no excuse for my behavior. I'm not trying to. I'm just going to share my story with you. <laughs> Because even now, like my insides cringe, but you know what? This is growing, this is evolving, and that's okay. I was doing the best that I could at the time. <laughs> but I would get so angry at these people because we would have to get like really close to each other in some areas, and sometimes like runners would come running up on us. And mind you, I have autoimmune disease, and I grew up with asthma. I have weaker lungs. So I'm definitely one, you know, considered to be one of the more um, um, I don't want to say weaker ones. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, I have to be extra careful, I guess. I'm again, not finding the word, but I was getting so upset. And my favorite activity was starting to turn into this like anxiety ridden thing. And, and I would, you know, by the time we'd get back, I'd be so upset. It was like the walk didn't help me at all. It didn't help me to release any energy. It didn't help me to calm down. I couldn't really enjoy my time with my partner. Um, and in my head, I was just thinking like, who raised you? Who raised you? You know, because for me at that present, in that, like when masks came about, as I shared with you, I, I grew up with asthma. I'm very claustrophobic and I'm not about it, but the thing for me was if this can potentially help someone else, then I'm happy to do it. And it took me trying out several different types of uh, fabrics, you know, for masks to find one that I, I felt like I could breathe comfortably in. But for me to like look at other people who like in my mind just didn't even care, it was like, oh my gosh, right? Again, morality police. So I was really struggling with this. And when I saw this beautiful 
story about the basketball players, it, oh man, it created this huge shift in me. It was like, I realized, it was like the world broke open in a way. And I realized we are constantly being invited in to polarizing topics, constantly. You know, it jumps from a Republican Democrat, right? Black and white, homosexual, heterosexual. Um, There's no end, right? Christian, non-Christian. Like, I mean, just all of these different dynamics. And I mean, if, if you think about it, man, it's just exhausting, right? It's never ending. And so that was when I realized, you know what? No, I'm, I'm not going to, A, I'm going to work better on, on judging people around me and pointing a finger, but B, like, I'm just straight up not going to be a part of that damn game. Like, hell no, I am, I am stepping out. I am not going to participate. I am not going to take sides. And I ended up creating a post after that that says, like, I wear a mask for me. And I explained that, you know, like, initially I wore my mask, um, like, sure, kind of from a place of fear. I, did, I don't know what COVID is. We, no, none of us know what COVID is. Um, and also wanting to help others. But then it quickly turned into a judgment game. And then I realized all these things. And so I decided in the end, you know what? Still, I come back to... I don't know what COVID is, so I'm going to wear a mask, but I'm going to wear it for me. And I'm going to stop stop judging everyone else for what they're doing. It's a waste of my time, a waste of my energy. And quite frankly, like, even though, especially at that time, back in 2020, when my mind, my consciousness was smaller, and I couldn't really understand the reasons for not wearing a mask, it just felt like this is just flat out none of my business. And again, I am stepping out. I am just going to refuse to play the game. That has brought me so much over the past couple of years. Um, I think that happened, you know, right middle uh, fall part of 2020 when I ended up sharing that post about the mask. But, um, you know, that since then, I've had so many opportunities to really evaluate when I catch myself in these polarizing places. What is it doing for me? What's going on here? You know, what, what's really at, at the root of it? And of course it's fear, 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 right? I've shared on this podcast multiple times, the root of every decision that we make, of everything that we say, of all of it is either fear or love. And we know what love feels like, we really do. And we know what fear feels like, we definitely do, right? So last year in 2021, um, I decided I needed a big break from social media. I stepped back for about six months. That was awesome. Um, I, I really needed to just pull my energy back to myself to a number of different things that I won't get into now. But the break was beautiful. And I've kind of been like, you know, I'm only back on like the social media channels really for this podcast. Um, and then also like I've kind of like, lurked in Facebook a bit here or there. I've been, I've been followed like a ton of people, um, that just no longer resonate with me, not enough to like unfriend them, but like, I've just, I'm really being purposeful about what I'm digesting, which, you know, is a huge thing. Again, I've talked about on this podcast, talk about all the time. I won't go into it, <laughs> but just being very purposeful there. And then, and then, a couple of weeks ago, in the midst of the issue that arose with the transgender swimmer Liz Thomas, I made I made a big mistake. <laughs> I commented as someone that I follow, have followed for years, years and years and years, uh, shared shared a post that someone else had written, a parent of another child that was just very polarizing. And, you know, the thing was like, I just, I just thought I, I'm, I'm so tired of this, you know? And when I left the comment, I was really, my intention was to start a conversation, but I mean, like, let's, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real about trying to have a conversation, like an actual intellectual, stimulating, respectful conversation on Facebook. Uh, 
you know, and, and with this person in particular, I, I really chose poorly because he's someone I've known for years who is very polarizing and he doesn't have discussions. He shames people and name calls them, which is what happened as soon as I left my comment. He commented back and it was just a train wreck. Um, and I want to use this particular topic as something for us to explore. And this is kind of what I talked about in regards to really being triggered because I want to ask you and I want to invite you into a space where you think larger and wider. So first of all, I just want to say very clearly, I am all for transgender rights. I am all for rights across the board, but when we say that one is more important than the other, then we just kind of flip the script on, on who's getting those rights, right? <laughs> That's not the way to go about it. Um, I, you know, I, I, my heart goes out to, uh, to Leah Thomas and, and what she must be going through in the midst of this, because, you know, like when I put myself in her position, all I can think is here, she's done something so courageous in, in naming who she is in, in, in stepping out and doing that for herself. And then getting such an enormous backlash and I mean, like, you know how it is. We, we always hear the bad more than the good. Um, and I'm sure that even though there were a lot of people like celebrating her, she probably got the, you know, she probably felt more of the negative than anything else. And um, years and years ago, I, I, there was a confrontation that happened with me and this group of people. They were uh, about... Um, you know, doing a, a video while you're driving. And um, they came after me with such intensity. It was insane. I mean, like people were commenting, like saying that I should die because I had shared a video while I was driving. <laughs> yeah. This was back in like 2016. It was, it was, it was such an ordeal that went on for a couple of months. Fortunately, I had several people rally around me, but I, I shared several times, you know, within that time frame, it was like, I'm glad that I have as much self-confidence as I do, because if I didn't, that could have really pushed me to some kind of edge. And, and the amount of vitriol that came towards me in that situation could have really pushed me to do something, to harm myself in some way. And so my heart truly goes out to Leah Thomas. And I, I don't want that for anyone. Um, anyone, anyone, anyone. And, um, but on the other hand, you know, I grew up playing sports and I am competitive. I mean, like I'm seriously competitive. <laughs> I'm competitive to the point where like, I have to really watch myself when I get involved in like sports, like hold myself back. I've gotten really good at it. But I, when I was younger, I was not good at losing. I was not good at anything like that. And I can tell you that if I had spent my life training for these professional competitive sports and someone had come in who had been playing, you know, Leah Thomas, I think did two seasons with men's teams um, before transitioning over. Um, I would have been livid, absolutely livid. And the thing is, is just that like, I think it's so important for us to try and put ourselves in, in both sides of the situation. Really think about it, really kind of maybe sit with it. And if you're not able to do that, that's okay. Because here's the thing, we need a third option. <laughs> and that was what my comment was about. And it was interesting because of course I was silly enough to, to, to share something in my commentary on the, on the Facebook about the middle space. And he was like, Oh, you're making up this imaginary space and you're so lazy in this thinking, you know, you just don't want to take sides. And it's like, no, no. What is lazy is taking sides. Okay. I am saying I don't have the solution, but I know that if we all came together, if we put our heads together, if we brought both transgender athletes, students, you know, if we brought, if we brought people from, from every camp and sat down and had some discussions, we might be, I, I believe firmly we can come up with a solution, 
We are beautiful, divine, creative beings. There is a solution. The bottom line is, is that men are stronger than women. And obviously there's going to be exceptions to the rules, but like, it's just biology. You know, and I feel like people are really scared to be honest about their feelings these days and to have these discussions. And when I was reading through like the other comments on this Facebook feed, it was like I could feel that. It was like people people wanted to rally behind what he was sharing, but then they also kind of felt like, oh, but there's more here. And I want to encourage you. There is more here. There is more here. We don't need to choose sides. We need to create a third. And don't these beautiful children, all of them, deserve more than a bunch of people bickering about each side of the fence? They just wanna, they just wanna play sports. They just wanna enjoy their lives. They just wanna try, a, try and grow up on a planet that's not totally doomed. And all they see are a bunch of adults bickering on both sides of the field. What is, what is that serving us? It's not. It won't be easy to create these third options. It won't be a easy to create these, this middle space, but we are capable of doing this. We so are capable of doing this. It's like, you know, taking sides, I'm sorry. That's so 2019. I think the pandemic, if anything, should have taught us about our togetherness, about us coming together, us us going through things together because my, my solution or my focus is on solutions, you know, like I don't believe people are right or wrong anymore. I just don't even within my own personal relationship, you know, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm privy to, to this understanding because of the work that I do within the Akashic records, because I've seen why it is, you know, I've, I've been in people's records and seen why parents abuse their children or why people, you know, why you lose your most favorite person on the planet. Why, why bad things happen to good people. Like I've seen so much of this. I've realized like, and I now know it with my entire being, there is no good and bad. There just is. And so like when looking at this one particular subject, right, which the bottom line is, is this is what we've got. <laughs> we've got transgender kids who want to participate in sports and we've got kids who want to participate in sports, you know, like both sides of the fence. And if I didn't name that correctly, please forgive me because I'm terrible with naming all the things correctly, but I do care. Um, but the bottom line is we've got people who want to play sports and that's really all that should matter to us. Our world is changing. Everything is changing around us. Just kind of like I talked about before with the morality and these different tribes coming together, all of these different moral things are, are converging. And so we've got to figure out a third option. We've got to use what has been given to us, the ability to create we are so smart, such intelligent beings, but we're going to have to push ourselves to get there. You know, I think a, a great, um, a, another great example of this is the vaccines, right? It infuriated me that there weren't more open discussions about the vaccines on both sides of the camp. You know, it infuriated me that there wasn't an ability for that our nation, I, I'm speaking specifically about here in the U.S. because this is where I live and this is what I've experienced, right? Um, but that, that our nation isn't mature enough to say like, okay, we've got, we've got folks who want them, we've got folks who don't, we've got folks who uh, don't trust them, we've got folks who do, we've got all of these things. So let's, let's, let's bring together some discussions, let's bring together some information, let's put it all in one place so that everybody can check it out and then make a decision that works for them. That's obviously not where our level of consciousness is yet. And I know it's where we're headed, but where it can start is with you and I, is on, in, in the daily goings about, right? Instead of judging that woman in the grocery store, instead of judging that homeless man on the street, instead of judging our, our partners, our neighbors, our family, it can start with us, right? Because as a collective, we are being called to change, to shift, to grow, 
specifically to broaden our horizon. It is time for us to begin coming together. And while my heart breaks every time I read the news in Ukraine, my heart also rejoices because Ukraine is paying the price of bringing the world together in ways that it never has been before. In, 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 in uh, garnering the sympathy and the compassion of people around the globe who typically would not have even paid attention. Ukraine is helping us to get connected with our hearts. And guess what? Russia is playing a role too, right? We can't, we can't dive into that polarity because Russia is playing a role too. And in order for that to shift, we need both sides. We need the light and the dark because we wouldn't recognize the dark without the light. We wouldn't see the light without the dark. You know what I'm saying here? It's so important. We need to begin recognizing when we're getting caught up in these polarizing loops against one another. Then we need to get curious. We need to get educated. We need to ask why. You know, like, man, I would have loved to have had a discussion with people who, you know, like I could have learned something. And, and I've always said, like, I don't learn things from people who agree with me. Like, my ego loves that, no doubt. But I don't learn things from people who always agree with me. I learn things from people who disagree with me, but do it respectfully. When the heck have you ever changed your mind because someone was beating you over the head with an opinion? Uh, probably never. <laughs> and when, when uh, this person's Facebook, you know, when he responded to me and, and literally the first sentence was name calling and shaming, like I was done. I was not even going to read the rest of his long ass reply to me because quite frankly, no, thank you. That's not, it's not how I operate. That's not what I do. I wanted to have a discussion and I don't have all the solutions. I definitely don't. And I'm not saying that I'm not even trying to say that, but the solution I do have is saying we can do more and encourage all of us, including myself, because this is like, you know, polarization is a part of us. It's who we are in many ways. And that's okay. We need to accept that within ourselves as well. But when we catch ourselves in that loop, pointing that finger, being judgmental, man, we got to rein it in. We got to get curious and we got to start thinking like, what else? What else is there? You know? I, in the very beginning of uh, the relationship with, with my partner, um, <laughs> you know, if you're on the dating scene or, or, or whatever the case may be, you know, I, I think that there's just this idea that like, you've got to be with someone who's like very much like you. Right. And, and I, I, I do agree in some respects. I think that, that your morality, your values need to align. I, I do agree. Um, however, there are always exceptions to the rule. So uh, there's no one size that fits all, but um, at least for me, those are things that are very important. But I remember my partner and I having these arguments, and he he said to me, I remember one day he sat me down, and he was like, Anna, why do you think us having differences is so bad? And I just kind of sat back and was like, whoa, you know, because the truth is, is that I love difference. Like I just said a second ago, I don't learn things when everything just falls into step, right? I enjoy difference. I love diversity. That's why I've traveled the world. That's why I'm such a, a lover of culture, of, of different things, of, of, yeah, I love difference. So it was such a beautiful question. Like, why am I so scared of this difference? But that's really what it is, right? It's just, it's just fear. And fear is just wanting to keep us safe. But the truth is that true freedom is on the other side of, of realizing the difference. Difference makes us stronger. Difference, difference makes us better. Difference gives us all kinds of beautiful variety. I mean, I don't know about you, but if this world was full of me, man, I'd want to get out of here. <laughs> I'd be like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> I love difference. Why do we feel the need to change others? Why do we need people to agree with us? What is that saying about us? Because it's all about us. When we get triggered, it's all about us, like I showed from the very beginning. 
So just kind of in closing here, I want to invite you to be radical. The next time that you are asked to choose a side, don't. Don't. Take a step back. See what you can learn. Consider other perspectives. Consider the trap of polarity. Consider being more. Because the thing is, if we want, like if we truly, truly want a better future, it starts with us. And this is where it starts. This is where it begins. In the middle space. In this new space. In this third space. All right, folks, if you stayed with me, much love. I so appreciate you. If this message resonated with you, please share this with family and friends, with anyone you know who might benefit from it, who potentially needs to hear it. You know, start a discussion with them, like listen to it, talk about it. Um, please just, I, I, I welcome you to just really absorb this message. And again, you're, you're going to, I'm going to be hitting on it from, from different angles in the future because it's one that I truly believe can change, can change our planet. So sending you so much love. Again, if you were inspired, please share. Also, leave a review on iTunes, Spotify, subscribe, wherever you're listening, um, and be sure to join my email list. You'll find links in the show notes and all the things. Um, I send out podcast updates, promotions that only that email list gets information, all kinds of stuff. So definitely a place you want to be, but sending you so much love. And don't forget, we invest in ourselves, the world benefits until next week.